Hi, my name is Mani Alikani. I am Dean and Professor at CITOR Academy and I'd like to welcome you to another session of CITOR channel. Today we continue our discussion on major movements and minor movements. <music> If you remember from last session, uh, we discussed that the first step of designing a proper mechanotropy is recognizing the major movements from minor movements. This is very important because any target that requires major movements requires a specific mechanics. You cannot just put braces and aligners and hoping that major movements will disappear by itself you need to address the problem separately. Three targets can require major movement in any patient. The largest target that may require major movement is a dental arch. Those appliances that address this major movement consider orthopedic appliances. And when we're talking about the whole dental arch, we are including the bone, the basal bone that is supporting that dental arch, whether it's maxilla or whether it's mandible. This is a little bit different from diagnostic and treatment planning when we separate the dental arch problems from the basal bone problems. In mechanotropy, because your mechanic is applied through the dental arch, we consider as one target. This dental arch by itself may require movement in one dimension or all three dimension. Vertically maybe it needs to go up and down, sagittally maybe it needs to move uh, in the space, or transversely maybe required to move in the space. Each one of these targets need to be recognized separately. It means some dental arch may only need to be moved in a sagittal plan, not transverse, not vertically. The importance of this separation of the movements in each dimension is because movement in each dimension requires a specific mechanics. Most of the time it is simpler to move one at a time and not combine movement all at the same time because it just makes it more complex and more risky. So when you have a large target such as dental arch and you're planning to move in one, two or all dimensions it is better to recognize each dimension separately and design a mechanic separately. The second target that may require major movement is maybe a segment of the teeth. Anytime that several teeth have similar problem, they make a segment. Again, these segments make a need to be moved vertically in a transverse plan or in a sagittal plan. Sometimes a segment similar to the dental arch may require movement in all three dimensions. Again, it is wiser to recognize the movement in each dimension separately and design a mechanics for each dimension separately. Combining them may be too risky. It is possible that patient may require a major movement in the dental arch and at the same time a major movement in a segment in the same dental arch. This is very important to be recognized because when we are sequencing our treatment, we need to recognize which one of these movements should be done first, the dental arch or segment inside the dental arch. Sometimes the segments of the teeth do not have a problem, but because of our design of mechanotropy, we create segments. Anytime that we decided to extract two first premolar, automatically we are making three segments anterior segments and two posterior segments. Any times that we are addressing a spacing, usually it is wiser to consolidate the teeth in three segments, anterior segments and posterior segments. With that, we can simplify our mechanics and be more efficient in delivering proper treatment. The third target that may also require major movement is the individual tooth. A patient may have one or more teeth that require a specific attention because they require major movements. Involving these teeth from the start in the design of minor movements, for example, braces or aligners, it would be very risky and harmful because these major movements may cause side effects on the adjacent structure and prolong the treatment. 
examples of individual tooth that requires major movement is a block out tooth, a tooth that is very severely rotated, an impacted tooth, a tooth that requires significant uprighting. All these conditions require that you prepare their mechanics and then with a specific design confine the side effects of these major movements to one location. A space by itself can be a major target. For example, you have a missing tooth and the primary tooth is there. If you just want to maintain the primary tooth, then it is not a major target. But if you are planning to remove the tooth and put an implant in that area, you need to adjust the space accordingly so that's become a major target or maybe you decided you want to close the space again another major target that need to be handled sometimes the teeth vertically have a major problem a tooth that is extruded significantly or the tooth that requires extrusion significantly both these conditions also need to be recognized early enough and we plan it properly so we do not cause side effects on adjacent teeth. I hope you enjoyed this session of CTOR channel. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please go ahead and subscribe and please don't forget to press the like button. Looking forward to continue this discussion with you in next session. Thank you.